Hi, this is Nancy L.T. Hamilton, and today we're going to do a video I thought I already did. <laughs> I found out I didn't on how to make jump rings. I'm going to talk about a manual form of doing it and a power tool kind, my favorite. It's a lot easier. Anyway, I'm going to start this video, and I think I'm going to start most of all my videos with um, explanation of some of the tools that you can, you don't have to have, but you can use to make these jump rings. So, first thing you need is a shape to make, wrap the wire around, and that can be a lot of different things, but they make these little sets here of jump ring mandrels, and they have a little slot in the top, and I will talk about what that is for in a minute. Um, they come in all different sizes, and these are marked in millimeter sizes, the measurement, the diameter measurement. You can use a wooden dowels, and I will show you how to customize them to make them work for jump rings. Uh, they also have a different kind of mandrel that um, is designed specifically for fitting into uh, a drill. These, this kind of, I don't know how many sides it is, two, four, six. I don't even know what the word is for six-sided. <laughs> these tools will work with your drill also. So these are both for, you can use them for manual too, but for making a lot of jump rings, these are um, the tools to use. And if you're doing manual jump rings, um, Fiskars makes this little weird plastic thing where you can make triangular, square, round, and oval jump rings, but you can't make very many. Um, there's also the mar uh, the nylon uh, half round nose you can use or round nose pliers. So those are some of the, the shaping tools. Um, for doing jump rings, you will probably need a wire cutter of some sort to cut the wire because you don't want to curl the whole spool. Safety goggles. Very important. Um, and for the part that I'm going to show you how to fit your wire into the mandrel, you'll need a piece of steel and a hammer. Um, and, I th and wire, of course, round or square or whatever shape you want. So um, I'm going to get set up. We're going to make some jump rings. Sorry, time over my fit. Um, I'm going to use round, round nose pliers to make uh, a few jump rings. And the trick with this is, let me start fresh here so you don't get confused. Cutting a piece off there. Okay, so what I do and others do is I'm going to start the jump ring like that and I'm just going to start curling. Now the trick is is to, to wind on the back side and keep it in the same place and for some reason it works. They stay the same size. So if this is a two part. So I come in, I go back. I come in, whoops I moved. See, you're not supposed to move. You got to keep your hands steady and if you hold everything in the same place, it will end up winding in the same place. It's weird science. So there we have our little handmade jump rings um, for that. And now we're going to try this Fiskars whoopee. Now this doesn't have real tiny ones, but I would not use this with 14 gauge or 12 gauge. I would cry. So it's the same concept. I'm using my finger here as a break. Um, the thing with this is that it's all the same size, so you don't have to worry about not making it round. So you keep it on that spot. This is a weird little tool. But it does have some interesting shapes, which is why I purchased it. Um, another thing is you want to try to keep the wire close together, unlike that. <laughs> it's not very well done. But you have to remember, I'm at a weird angle trying to make this visible to you. So that's using the little Fiskars guy. You can also use the um, the these mangled. Oh my gosh, I need new nylon. The same concept with the nylon ones, and this doesn't mar your metal when you're making your jump rings. It's a little more difficult. There we go. I just had to get the rhythm going. A little slippery. It's a lot easier if you don't have a big wad of jump rings hanging off the end of it when you're doing it. But you get the concept, right? If I make a few, I usually use these, though. It's a pretty quick, easy way to do it. Um, and when I cut them, occasionally I will put them on 
these pliers and hold them and saw um, through with my jeweler saw. But we will talk about sewing jump rings in a minute. So those are the manuals. There are, you can also just, um, let me cut this off. You can also just wrap it around a dowel or anything round. I mean, it's, there's no real rules on this. The dowels aren't bad. You might want to wear a glove on one hand because this little end gets a little sharp, but concept is just twist, <laughs> twist and smush if you can, because the closer they are, the easier they are to saw. Um, but of course it's a demo and I can't get anything perfect, you know, just how it is. Sorry. So anyway, we're going to go on to um, uh, my favorite using power tools. So when you are going to use a drill to make um, jump rings, uh, and especially if, the, if you have these slotted topped mandrels that I showed you earlier, um, you need to put the metal into this slot. And what I do before I do that, especially with the thick metal, is I make a little L. I'll try to do this so you can see. Bend, and I try to get it pretty square with some flat nose, like that. And then I uh, wrestle it over here, and then flatten it out pretty thin so it fits into the top. The thicker metal is is difficult to get into the tops of these slots, so that's why I'm hammering it down. And you want this kind of bend in it so that when you put it in your drill, the metal goes like that. It fits into the slot um, and holds, it, this holds the metal to the mandrel so it doesn't slip off while you're winding. Um, if you are using a dowel, um, you can adapt it like I did with a cutoff disc or you can use a jeweler saw where you make a slit down the end of uh, the dowel and see how I've prepped this end here you know this just when I when I ran it in the drill I just slid the P and I'm not gonna it's not gonna work obviously <laughs> but it did because <laughs> that's how I made these um, the benefit to using dowels um, if you don't have the set that's a particular benefit but you can saw right through this dowel uh, put it on your bench pin and just saw right through the dowel. I would pull it up to the end here, cut this little whoopee off, and then saw off. So, and because you could, you know, make it'll probably last four or five times. You can always flip it over and use the other side. So, it's cheap, you know, what the hell. Okay, so now once I have this, I'm going to go in the other room with the drill and we're going to have a really good time. So, here we are at the drill. Um, a couple of safety tips. Wear your goggles and wear a glove because this stuff, when it spins around, can um, flip and cut your fingers. Also, get in your eyes. Another thing I forgot to do need to take this and put it somewhere. <laughs> we'll put it back here. And then I see another flaw. Just so flawed today. Long dangly jewelry gone. All right, now I'm ready. Going in, kids. All right, so we got our. Now I can't pick up the mandrel because of the glove. Okay, in slot, in drill. Notice the drill is in a big. My manly vice. Remember, if you saw my studio tour, I'm gonna tighten this down. And it likes, it likes to give you a lot of problems because this wire kind of gets in the way sometimes so I'm trying to tighten it really well I'm gonna pull it over here and pray that I've got it going in the right direction nope I don't so much for that prayer okay now what I'm doing is I'm gonna stick my finger up oh see how that moved that means the wire moved oh and I'm opening it now Nancy have you ever done this no I haven't why do you ask <laughs> this is awfully loose sorry it's a demo. It's supposed to happen like this. Okay. If you look inside of a drill, you'll see why this is happening. There's three, um, it's kind of like in the, that's a four, but there are three. There's three little uh, kind of holder things in it, and 
they're not happy. They're not hooking on to this well. Okay, let's try that. So it's not perfect, but I'm going to hold it. So I've got one finger that's holding it under here, and these two fingers are holding the wire. They're threading it. My right hand is on the, the um, what do they call that? On a gun. Uh, trigger. And I'm kind of just going to slowly turn, and I'm going to keep trying to keep the wire to the left. And I'm trying to go as slow as I can. Now, these are really thick jump rings. I'm moving my hand down. See how that came around? If you didn't have gloves on, you'd probably have a nice gash in your hand now. And then I'm just going to hand twist this the rest of the way around. So those are big girl, big girl jump rings. And then I yank that off, clip and clip with the wire cutters. And um, I'll show you how I cut these in a second. I'm not going to put my hair back down. Now we're going to use my favorite tool. This is the um, jump ring um, cutter it's called the Coil, K-O-I-L Cutter by Dave Ahrens. Um, I'll have a link to that. There's also a jump ringer and I think Rio sells that. And then there's a handheld one called the Jiffy Jump Ring Tool. Um, three different types of cutting stuff. So anyway, um, this tool has a, a blade that spins around fast. There are good instructions that come with the with the kit when you buy it. Um, follow them. Make sure you wear your goggles. What I do on this is I mark with a little pen where the blade goes. If I if I'm used to use this not as a dedicated flex shaft for this, um, and I would take this plastic guard off often and I could never figure out how to get it exactly right so I marked where to put it I also when I get it on here sometimes I'll make sure it sits see the blade sits down in that groove and the the cutout fits around the exterior of the um, holder here um, there's another little thing in here see that little wad of stuff that's there for a reason it's to keep the jump rings from sliding all the way to the end. Um, so what you need to do is push the jump rings all the way to the end of this little bar. So I put it down here and then take something like a, you know, like this, <laughs> a little mandrel and push it to the end and then tighten it down. There are directions on how to do this in your bookie. Um, you do need some kind of lubricant. You can use beeswax on the blade um, Burr Life, which is what I'm going to use, olive oil. Um, and you don't want this too bowed, you want it to just hold it without moving it. And these are really thick, so there's probably going to be a little smoke. Um, so don't panic, don't call the fire department. I'm going to, I can put some on here if I want, but I, I usually just run it, <laughs> try to run it down the jump ring itself, um, which means, of course, that I need to torch these to clean off or you know, wash them in soap and water or something, but I'll just probably hit them with a torch and throw them in pickle. So, um, I've got a foot pedal down here. I'm going to line up my tool, make sure my um, guard is on tight, and I'm going to keep my hand down here. Because if I have it up here and I slip by accident, I could cut my knuckles. So, I'm going to keep it down here and turn it on. There we go. It wasn't that easier than sawing them by hand. Yes, Nancy, it was. It was very easy. And now I got all these fabulous jump rings. There's two that aren't fabulous, almost always. The first one and the last one. And I'll find the. Oh, that must be the first one. That looks. No, no, no. Oh, yes, it is. Okay, so then all the rest are going to go and get torched and then put into the pickle pot. Now I'll have nice annealed jump rings um, and then get work hardened when I open and shut them to put on the piece. So that is the lazy woman's way and efficient way to cut them. But there are, like I said, there are other um, tools that are out there to use for cutting jump rings that work great too. So um, last thing we're going to do is show you how to cut jump rings by hand. The fun way. Not. So here's the manual way to uh, saw, or one of the 
there's probably 10 other ways. This is what worked for me before I got my handy dandy coil cutter. Um, if you, your bench pin, you can drill a, um, with a bigger drill bit, drill a nice round in there to lean this thing. I've got it on the dowel and I got a little piece of masking tape on it to kind of hold everything together. And I put in a one-aught saw blade because I am sawing thick brass. So adjust your saw blade to what you're working with. Keep that finger out of the way back there, by the way. And notice the saw blade is not the normal up and down. It's an angle. What I do is when I get to a certain point and it starts becoming annoying, I pull off the ones I've cut and slide it up back up to my groove, line it up with the one we cut with the cutoff disc, and continue sawing. Um, and it gives you a nice uh, clean cut on your jump ring. So, you know, if, you, if I'm doing a couple, this is what I'll do, but mostly I use the, um, the coil cutter because I'm a lazy woman. So um, that's our jump ring video. And um, I'm sorry for telling people I had one that I didn't. I thought we did. We looked. We couldn't find it. So here it is. Enjoy it. I hope you learned something. Thank you for coming. And I'll see you next time.